What's up? This is Tom Froming from TwinsDaily.com. We are going to talk about Alex Kirloff and Trevor Larnick face-to-face, head-to-head. The best part about this discussion is we don't have to decide. As Twins fans, we got both of these guys in the system. So that's the most fun uh, comparison, is that we don't have to pick one. We got both of them. So let's take a look. I've got the tail of the tape here pulled up. Uh, As you can see, uh, they're almost the same age. Actually, Trevor Larnick's a little bit older uh, than Alex Kirilov. Alex Kirilov drafted in 2016 out of high school. Trevor Larnick drafted in 2018 out of college. Uh, So almost the same age. Both of these guys hit left-handed. And before we dig into anything else, Um, nowadays, especially when I think of left-handed hitting prospects, um, one of the things I like to do is make sure to take a look at their spray charts, which you can find these on prospects at prospect live. If you search for, I believe miners graphs, you can go to a page where you can pull these up. Uh, so here's Alex Kirilov and this is over his entire minor league career. And here's Trevor Larnick. Why is this important to look at? Well, in today's era with so many shifts, especially with left-handed hitters, um, that can really neutralize uh, a lot of offensive potential if you're a dead pull hitter, if you're really looking to only uh, hit the ball, uh, pull the ball. And neither of these guys do that at all. You can see Alex Kirilov uh, and Trevor Larnick really use the whole field. And, you know, just kind of want to point out a couple things here. Uh, one, uh, you can see most of Larnick's power is actually opposite field or dead center. Uh, that color is uh, his home runs. So you don't see him pulling the ball and uh, hitting a lot of home runs. Uh, Kirilov, definitely still uh, sort of a center, left center approach for him as well. And he gets a lot of extra base hits and home runs the other way. But you can see, you know, that is a large grouping of home runs that he pulls. So every once in a while, he'll sit on a pitch and just absolutely destroy it. Uh, whereas you don't see that as often, or we haven't over Larnick's minor league career. Um, but main point, neither of these guys are strictly pull hitters. Um, as lefties, that is super important these days. Uh, but moving down, this section here is all of their career minor league numbers. You know, obviously keeping in mind that we don't have anything from 2020 as far as, far as stats goes for these guys. Uh, so make sure to keep that in mind. Again, uh, Kirilov. Uh, has the advantage in batting average, slugging, and OPS, whereas Larnick has the advantage in on-base percentage. Uh, But overall, both guys really good numbers uh, over their careers. And it's kind of interesting to note that they were both in AA in 2019. And uh, here is the breakdown there. Alex definitely played a lot more games. And, you know, to to be fair, fair to point out that he was dealing with a wrist issue uh, for much of the 2019 season. Um, and then here's Larnick. Larnick outperformed them when they were both at double A at the same time last year, as you can see by the numbers there. And sort of uh, why I want to bring this up is I think Kirilov, you know, he's more in our mind, uh, especially since he got the, the appearance in the postseason against the Astros. Uh, he's been around longer. Um, he's always been uh, on top of prospect lists for the most part above Larnick. Um, but let's take a look at some of these hitting grades. You know, we showed some of the numbers to show how similar these guys are. And I think it's kind of a, it's been lost a little bit in the shuffle uh, that Trevor Larnick is, uh, you know, pretty much on the same level as Alex Kirilov as a prospect. Um, so we, here I have MLB pipelines uh, ranking of them. And as you can see there, it's almost a dead heat. They give uh, Kirilov a slight advantage in this hit tool and his running, and then Larnick the advantage in arm strength, but most of these power, fielding, and overall all tied with these guys. They have Kirilov 2 and Larnick 3 in the system, uh, but fan graphs, and these are, fan graphs will, will give you the present value and projected value. I'm going with the present value here because, you know, just to think about where these guys might fit, if I fit in, uh, excuse me, in 2021 next season. Uh, so just to go through these hit tool, pitch selection, bat control, game power, and then raw power, speed, fielding, arm, and then future value. So Kirilov, the hit tool, the bat control, the fielding, and the arm strength. I'll go to Kirilov. Larnik on this one gets the pitch selection, and it's a pretty big uh, big difference there. Uh, game power, raw power, and speed. Although, you know, something to keep in mind, neither of these guys is really going to bring a whole lot to the table in terms of running the bases or playing in the field. They are definitely bat first. Uh, guys, but future value on both of them is 50. However, Fangraphs actually currently has Larnick a bit ahead of Kirilov. Um, in their top 100 prospect list, I believe Larnick is currently 50 and Kirilov is currently 52. So it is a razor thin margin, but they're basically the same. 
Um, and I think uh, this is sort of how I view them as well on these two uh, in particular. Pitch selection, I do think Trevor Larnick is a bit more of a patient hitter. He's a little bit more willing to work uh, more at bats, whereas uh, Kirilov actually, you know, almost working against him working longer at bats as he's such a good contact guy. His swing is tailored to have his barrel through the zone uh, forever. Uh, so he he just makes a lot of contact. He's not really up on, up there looking for walks or anything, uh, whereas Larnick is a little bit more of a patient hitter. So it's almost like that's sort of, you know, your determining factor. Um, I think Fangraphs also mentioned that they are a little weary of Kirilov getting moved to first base, which would bump his value down a little bit. And that's true. Uh, they both bat left-handed, but Larnick throws right-handed. Kirilov throws left-handed. Uh, so maybe Kirilov would be more likely to make the move to first base eventually. I have Kirilov ahead of Larnick because I agree with these these two things here. But I think the one thing that's most likely for a player to develop is pitch selection or the way they work and at bat. Uh, so yeah, I would agree that Larnick is ahead of Kirilov at this time. But I think that's something that can be developed um, over time. So that's why I kind of have, I think Kirilov's raw skills are better than Larnick's at this point. And again, they're almost the same age. So how awesome is it that both of these guys are in the twin system? Uh, I mean, this is a big reason why the twins might just simply non-tender Eddie Rosario. Both of these guys are ready. They're 23 years old. Um, they would have been at least in double A, probably triple A, if not playing in the big leagues, had it been a, a full season. Um, so they are ready, ready to go. You also have Brent Rooker, you also have Jake Cave. Speaking of those two guys, they could be a nice little right-left platoon if you wanted to. So still still wondering what's going to happen with Rosie. Still wondering what's going to happen with Nelson Cruz. But, you know, in addition to those guys, you got Ryan Jeffers and, and Mitch Garver. And, you know, one of those guys can DH when they're not catching. So the Twins, just an abundance of bats right now. It's going to be really interesting to see who, who they bring back from last year, um, who they try to sign, and then potentially who they try to trade among these guys. But... Wow, what a great situation to have both of these guys in the system. Uh, that wraps it up. Let me know what you think about these two guys, uh, who, who, who you'd have first and why. And uh, again, this has been Tom. Thanks for checking this out. We'll talk again soon.